Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing Cache OS on a separate disk alongside Windows without using a USB drive or a DVD. So to get started, going to download Cache OS, going to cacheos.org, and then going to go to download, and I'm going to download the desktop edition, scrolling down, and then direct, and then once it's downloaded, go into your downloads folder, and so here's my image. And I'm going to mount it, so you can hit enter or right click and mount, open, and this will put it on its own drive, so for my case, onto the E drive here. And now I'm going to open up disk management, start disk management, and I have disk 0, which is my first drive, and it has 476 gigabytes, and this is where I have Windows. And disk 1 is my NVMe drive, and it's 223 gigabytes, and it's a data drive for me. And so I'm going to be installing Cache OS on my NVMe drive here, and I don't need to use the entire drive, I can just use some free space on it. So on my D drive, I have 141 gigabytes free, so more than enough free space. So for this install, I'm going to be using 50 gigabytes. Select my D drive. Right click, shrink volume, and then shrink it by 50,000, shrink. All right, so there's my unallocated space. And I'm gonna be creating three new partitions. The first partition will be a separate EFI partition for the Cache OS boot files. If I use the same existing EFI partition here that Windows uses, which is my 100 megabyte partition here, then I'll likely run into a problem later on. Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this partition, which can happen, for example, after a Windows update. And if the Cache OS boot files are not there, then you won't be able to boot into Cache OS. So to avoid this, I'll be creating a separate EFI partition and putting the Cache OS boot files in it. So right click, new simple volume, next, and it'll be 512 megabytes for the EFI partition, next, next, it'll be FAT32. Default, and I'll label it as EFI Cache OS. Next, finish. And going back to the unallocated space, the second partition is going to be a regular NTFS partition. In the installer, I am able to resize my D drive, which should be able to work, but it's possible it may not be able to complete the resize, and then you get an error. So to avoid this, I'll be creating a regular NTFS partition, which I will be using it for, which I will discuss further in the installer. New simple volume, next. And for the space, I'll have to set aside 3000 megabytes for the installation media. So this will be 46488. Next, next, NTFS. Just call it Cache OS. Next, finish. The third partition is going to be for the Cache OS installation media. So new simple volume. Next, next, next. We FAT32. Label it as ISO. Next, finish. And now I'm going to go back into Explorer. Go into the E drive that I mounted earlier. Select everything, copy. Go into my new F drive and paste. All right, everything has been copied over. Going back to disk management. And so my 512 megabyte partition here, for the installer to be able to use it as an EFI partition, it has to be seen as an EFI partition. So I have to change it. And on my F drive here, your BIOS should be able to boot into it. But if not, it may be because it needs to be seen as an EFI system partition. So I'm going to be changing that as well. Start, I'm going to run disk part, run as administrator, yes. Type in list disk. And so there's my two disks, disk zero and disk one. So it's disk one, I'm going to select, select disk one, type in list partitions. And then I'm going to be selecting partition number two, which is the 512 megabyte partition. Type in help set ID, and type in set ID equals, I'm going to scroll up, 
and get the EFI system partition value in hex, copy it, and then paste. Enter. All right, it's been changed. And we can see in disk management, it's been changed as well. And I'm going to type in list partitions again. And I'll have to change partition number four as well, which has the ISO. Select partition four. And then do the same thing. Set ID. Enter. All right, it's been changed. And I'm going to exit out. And I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that Secure Boot is disabled. And if you have Fast Boot, disable it as well. And in your BIOS, select to boot from the installation media. And in my case, in my BIOS, I have the option to do a one time boot into it, and it's labeled as UFI OS. And how I know that, if I go back into Windows, open up a command prompt that's administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description, UFI OS. And now I'm going to boot into it. All right, it's booted into the installation media. So I'm going to run it. All right, it's started up. I'm going to launch the installer. And it's asking you to select your bootloader. So this will allow me to choose between Windows and Cache OS. I'm going to be using Refine. All right, it's asking you to select your language, next. Select your region and zone, next. Your keyboard type, next. And here it's asking you to select your storage device. So I'm gonna make sure that it's selecting my NVMe drive, 224 gigabytes. So it has it selected, so that's good. And so this is where I'm gonna be selecting replace a partition. This will be the NTFS partition that I created earlier. So select it. I'm gonna use the default file system, BTRFS. And it's asking me to select a partition to install it on. So it's going to be the 45 gigabyte partition, which is labeled as NVMe 0N1P3. So I'm going to select it. And so we can see it turns into red, Cache OS down here. And the EFI system partition I'm going to be using is the 512 megabyte partition that I created in Windows. So it has it selected, so that's good. And then next. And here it's asking you to select the desktop you'd like to use. So you got multiple options here. I'm gonna be selecting Plasma, next. And it's asking here if you want to install any additional packages. And of course you can always install these afterwards if you like, so I'm gonna hit next. Here, fill in your name, login name, computer name, and password. And at the bottom here, it asks if you want to log in automatically without asking for the password. I'm gonna be keeping this unchecked. And I'm gonna be using the same password for the administrator account. Next. And this screen here provides an overview of everything it's gonna do. And then once ready, hit install. Install now. All right, it's going to install it. And if you go to the bottom right, select the icon and you can see the logs. And select it again to get out of it. And so this will take a little bit of time to install. All right, the install has completed, and I'm going to restart, and it should go into Refine, the boot manager. But to make sure, I am going to restart and go into the BIOS just to confirm. Restart. Done. All right, so my boot options. Boot option number one is the Windows boot manager. Boot option number two is UFI OS. And boot option number three is the Refine boot manager. So I'll have to change it so the Refine boot manager is first and then save changes and exit. All right, the Refine Boot Manager starts up and I'm using the arrow keys to go through the options. And so this option will go into Cache OS. This would boot into the installation media. This would boot into Windows. This would reboot and go to my BIOS. This would reboot my computer. This would shut it down. This is to manage hidden tags in Refine. So if you want to hide an item, this gives you information about Refine. This goes into the UFI shell. And this option would also go into the installation media. So I'm going to go into Cache OS. Log in. All right, the welcome screen comes up. I'm going to close it. All right, so it's booted into Cache OS. So the installation media partition, I no longer need it. 
so I can remove it. So I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to type in sudo fdisk-l, put in my password. And so there's my NVMe drive, and it's partition number 4, which has the installation media, so I no longer need it. And I'm going to type in df-h. And partition number 3, it has 46 gigabytes allocated. And after, there will be 49 gigabytes available. And I'll do a btrfs file system show. Put a sudo in front of it. And so we can see the space right now. So what I can do to delete the partition, I can use Pardon, which is Partition Editor. Or I can use gparted, which is a GUI version of it. And so I'm going to install it using Pacman, Package Manager. Pacman-s. And then gparted. Yes. All right, it's been installed. And so if I check, there's gparted. I'm going to load it up. Put in my password. And so there's my partition, labeled as ISO. I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to delete. And then going to apply. Apply. And it has completed. Close. And so we can see the unallocated space. And now I'm going to select partition number three, right click, and then resize. And I'm going to use all the free space and then resize, and then apply, apply, and go to the details. And we can see what it did. So it calibrated it, and then it grew the partition from 45 to 48 gigabytes. And then we can see here that it already did a BTRFS file system resize, so you don't have to do it. And if I hit close, and going back into my terminal, and then running df-h again, and we see now it's at 49 gigabytes. And then now going to do a file system show. And we see it's at 48.33 gigabytes. And I'm going to reboot my computer to ensure I can get back into Windows. All right, refine comes up. And we can see that there are fewer options because I had removed the installation media partition. And then now I'm going to go into Windows. So it's booted into Windows as expected. So that's it. That's how you can install Cache OS on a separate disk alongside Windows without using a USB drive or a DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.